I want to remind everybody that when you were here a year ago, you told me that the markets were underestimating the Fed's <laughs> appetite to raise interest rates. That's right. Yeah. You were right. The last time we were here, we talked about trade and margin compression. You said the market was underestimating both. Yeah. You were right there, too. Okay. One needs only look at what Apple had to say a few days ago. Yeah. Okay. You've just come out with a new outlook for 2019. The game has changed. Yep. What do you mean by that? I think there's some big secular things that are changing that we need to kind of take a step back and look, look at. And maybe I'll run through those. I mean, one is I think there's a secular shift from monetary policy to fiscal. And so most investors who've been in the market today have had the Fed and the central banks really driving rates down through monetary stimulus. We're now pulling that back and governments around the world to really appease their voters are using more fiscal stimulus. Trump's doing that. Uh, we're seeing, certainly seeing that in Europe. That's a shift in your playbook, which is you need to up, move to more upfront yield. You need to own more things linked to nominal GDP. That's point number one. Point number two is I do think financial conditions are, are going to tighten as we pull money out. And so we may be stuck in a little bit of a range where when things are good, you pull the monetary policy away. And when things are bad, that means that you probably have some margin or slowing growth. And so there's a little bit of a, a give and a, and a take. And so that's going to lead to more volatility in the markets. And I think we'll get to this later probably, but in our asset allocation, we really tried to create vehicles where we have more flexibility. Mm -hmm. Um, two other points. One is just geo geopolitical tensions are rising. I think we'll get some news on trade that is positive, but I ultimately believe that global supply chains are changing and that technology will retain its position as a kind of a, a tension point between the U.S. and China. And then the, 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 the final thing I would say is just that technology has been the leadership group uh, really since 2009. And I think that between valuations and kind of regulatory pressures, it can be a, still be a good performer, but it won't be so divided from the rest of the market. You mentioned allocation being the, you know, what, what all of that is a function of. Right. Um, where does the rubber hit the road? How do you change, how do you change the way you, you yeah. invest? I think, look, I think what we were trying to signal at the beginning of the year is given the do dislocation in the fourth quarter is that you got to lean in. Uh, we upgraded public equities, the U.S. in particular, um, for the first time in, in, in three years. So you want to you want to step in. Second is in credit. Um, I think what we're moving away from, and, and I think there was some maybe some misunderstanding on what we were saying, is uh, it's not that we're negative on levered loans or we're negative on high yield. What we're saying is, is that probably the most efficient vehicle where we're seeing the most alpha generation right now is, is, is really portfolios that have the ability to toggle between levered loans, high yields, and structured products. The, the market structure is, is changing, right? We have a huge amount of ETFs coming in and coming out. Dealer inventories are down about 80%. And you have some um, money coming out of the system. So when I think about that, uh, one day you may come in and, and it may be that a loan is, is hung in an investment bank. The next day it may be that retail doesn't want to own a closed-in fund. And so what we're trying to do is pivot a little bit more. Are you saying, Henry, that you need to be more of a trader in credit and less of an investor in credit? What, what I'm saying is that investing is an emotional sport. And, and right now, when emotions get uh, get unsettled, you should be leaning in. Um, we think that we are going to have an economic... Buy dips, sell rallies? Um, I think probably more than just buying dips, which is where we were during kind of the monetary stimulus uh, phase of this cycle. Um, we do think at KKR that growth is going to slow. So, you know, at the end of last year, GDP was around three. And I think we talked about about half of that being inventory build. We think it's going to go down to about 1%. And if it goes lower, it'll be because of two factors. GDP growth at 1%? Yeah, I think you could have when? GDP by the, by the fourth quarter, kind of one to one and a half percent. So that's our projection. For earnings this year, we're at 3%. Uh, the consensus has been kind of 5 to 10. We think that will come down. And I think relative to last year when you had 23% earnings growth, um, that will feel very slow. But that's why, the, look, the, mar the market multiple is down 25%. Yes, and this is what I'm getting yeah. at. Why are public equities attractive if you have slowing GDP growth, right. you have margin compression, you have uh, you know, a deceleration yep. in, in profit growth among American corporates? That doesn't sound, even post sell-off in the fourth quarter, that does not sound like a recipe 
for public well, equity. I guess what I would say is at, at this point, if the multiple is contracted 25 to 30 percent, typically in a recession, you get 25 to 30 percent multiple compression. So the market has already said to some degree there's a recession occurring, right? Internally, when we look at our recession forecast, we have the S&P dropping 20 percent. We had oil going to 45 percent and we had global auto sales going to 53 million. We hit every one of those bogeys. The only thing we didn't hit in our little matrix was unemployment, which is a lagging indicator. And I actually don't believe that unemployment is going to go. I think we'll have an uptick in unemployment, but this is not 2007 or 2008. So if I get what you're saying, if you don't believe there's a recession coming yep. and what you've said is not a recession, yep. then the market's overcorrected. I think the market had overcorrected. Essentially, when we got right before around Christmas Eve, we were we had taken out 100 percent of the Trump tax cuts when the S&P got down to below 2400. That seems extreme to me. I'm not in the camp that we're going back to 3000. I think this is going to be a, a, a knife fight. But there are opportunities. And when the market sells off, you've got to you, you've got to be leaning into that. And I think one of the things that as a firm that we're focused on right now is most people have really migrated towards growth stocks where they're very fast growers, and that, that's certainly a good business. Momentum stocks had done very well. There's a lot of different investments around the world right now where cash flow is on sale. People are not valuing um, cash flow, and I think you'll see both private equity as well as strategic buyers migrate into the public markets and take advantage of that. And implicit in what I'm saying is, is that financing costs will not get so dislocated that either a strategic or a private equity firm can't finance those deals. I see. You mentioned earlier that your commentary on credit has drawn a lot of interest already. Yep. And in your words, perhaps a little bit of misunderstanding. Yep. Um, there's a reason that it's drawn interest, right? No high yield deal being priced in all of December makes people nervous. Liquid credit, private credit, CLOs, they're obviously not all the same thing. People are interested in knowing how you differentiate between the three. Okay. So this is a complicated question. Let's walk through this. I think when you look at where there's been excess debt or a lot of debt issuing, number one would be the investment grade market in the U.S. That's, that market has doubled. The second would be is the smaller end of the direct lending market where I don't think some of the, the managers have the ability to take control of the company or affect change. I think that could be problematic. And the third will be China where we just had a lot of debt and so it will probably slow growth. Um, High, let's take the opposite side of it. High yield, actually, supply has been shrinking. Uh, coverage ratios are actually at very good levels. And so I don't think we're going to have an implosion in high yield. Levered loans, I think you have to be selective. But um, there are areas in software and some areas where we might have some concern. But overall, I think we, we are finding things to do. Um, I also wear the hat as the CIO of the, the firm's balance sheet. And we're very active in CLOs. We are still in the CLO business. We like that business. It's been an incredible source of yield for our clients and for the balance sheet. And I think that that's one we will continue to be um, uh, active in. So we, you know, it's, it's, we're not sitting here being Pollyannish. We've, we've issued a lot of debt over the last 10 years. We have a very uh, successful active liquid credit business, and we have a very powerful distressed business. Within those two buckets, I actually increased my allocation this year. I didn't pull back on those. I increased my allocation because those are where we think there will be some dislocation and we want to lean in. 